Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. For those of you guys new here, basically what I do is I commentate everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm thinking about so that you guys can see the consistencies across all my gameplays, across Minions all the ranks I play in, and apply it for yourself. Fear me. So today we are playing in Emerald 1 and Diamond 4. This is my second game back playing League of Legends. So don't go too hard on me if I make some big mistakes. But yeah, going into this game, we're running the classic rune page setup. Uh, everything's pretty standard, 10% attack speed, 5 AD, scaling HP. Um, and yeah, here we go. For this game, I'm planning on building Bork, Rageblade, Terminus, just to try it. So instead of going Wit's End in the third slot, which I normally would have a couple of like last season, we're going to go Terminus and see what happens. So <coughs> let's jump into it. So we are against an Aatrox top lane with Ignite. We're going to start off with farming the wave and then we're going to control bush number three. Grab a little poke into the bush we go. We tank like one minion there which is not terrible. Zone the Aatrox. Auto him into the bush you go. And reset the minions like fully. Oh I'm trolling. Okay, focus on the wave still. We're against Graves Jungle, so no CC from him, just his W. Aatrox has E now, so he can look for some EQ gameplay. Shenanigans. I hear the there you go, dodge. Ah, bad spacing. I start pushing the wave. I think I can outplay the Graves and Aatrox, so I'm gonna do a 4 wave crash here and chill. And if Graves does gank me, I'm pretty sure Belveth will be able to counter gank, and I won't die. The shadows are to be feared. Aya. Okay. I'm not gonna ward here. I'm gonna ego it and just start shoving the wave. So yeah, very classic four wave crash. I'll ex explain it in a second for those of you guys new here. Beware. He's gonna be here. That's fine. We did not achieve our goal, which is to get his HP potion. So, we're going to take a base here and grab some items. Grab boots, grab a... Uh... Hmm. I do think boots is very valuable here. Grab a long sword, I guess, and no refill potion. Alright, so, for those of you guys new here, basically what I just executed was a 4-wave crash. There are two crashes you can do. There's a 3-wave crash into base, there's a 4-wave crash into base. The three wave crash is if you're suspecting the enemy jungler is pathing top and he's gonna full clear and you wanna leave before he can gank your lane. So then that's when you do a three wave crash. A four wave crash is you overstaying so that you accept that you potentially can get ganked if the enemy jungler is pathing top and then you're gonna outplay the gank. So that is your two options that you wanna go for when you're able to fully control the lane. And then from there, because you crash the wave into the tower, the wave will bounce back, as you can see in front of you right now. So when you come back to the lane, your objective is to shave the wave as much as you can without dying. And put your opponent in a position where they're in front of your tower, kind of, like this. And they're forced to walk up and clear the wave. And when they walk up and try to clear the wave, that's when you poke the hell out of them. And then you try to potentially run them down, if you can get them low enough. It's not a crazy rundown. So yeah, just poking, getting him off the wave. Now I can shave it a little bit and keep freezing until the next wave comes. And what freezing is, is basically you're trying to hold the wave in a state where it's infinitely being held, like right here. So he's forced to walk up and try to deal with it if he wants to. And as you can see, he's in an awkward position where if he takes a base with Ignite, he's going to be losing a lot of minions. because I forced them into that awkward situation by holding the minion wave there. So if you want to go back and do a quick little VOD review of what I just did, I, I basically zone him from the wave so he can clear the minions. And then I forced them to come back to try to deal with it and I slowly poked him down a couple times. And eventually I got him low enough where he... 
was in a position where I can run him all the way down. Alright, so I need a ward here and I am forced to push out this next wave. I see Graves mid, so I'm fine with it. I think I'm just gonna E the, e the first minion then run away. Because the wave crashed for the most part. The reason why you E the first minion there is so that you push it in. So that your wave can move in a bit more. And now as you can see, the wave is bouncing back towards me. Let me grab Berserker Graves here. And I think it's too late to grab a... Uh, refill potion, so we're just gonna grab that and head back. So the reason why the wave is pushing back towards us is because the wave is closer to his side, where the first wave meets. So as you can see, the next wave that's coming is going to get to the battlefield faster, which means that their minions will start doing damage to my minions faster, therefore it'll push towards us. And whenever you base, you always want the wave pushing towards you because that means you'll be able to come back to a nice juicy wave waiting for you on a silver platter. If you're ever in a position where the wave's freezing towards them and they're holding the wave, you never want that because you don't want to be losing minions and you have to walk up to clear it on top of that. So right here in this position, we are going to slowly poke the Aatrox down and then try to hold that freezing position I discussed earlier. We start leveling up W now. We got three points into Q. I think Graves is watching Dragon. I just think someone's fighting over there. Yeah. So he should have his abilities here. He's gonna QB to his two. I can probably do a bit of damage here. I don't think he kills with that yet. You have slain an enemy. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a freeze while basing. As you can see, look at the wave. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 3 mage minions. Ooh, maybe I should clear it one more. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm basing while the wave is pushing towards me, but not too quickly. So it was important that I cleared a couple minions there as you guys saw. I was like working down like, like I worked down like 3 melees. I think I killed 1 mage maybe. And I shaved down the wave to a point where I knew the wave was still pushing towards me, but it wouldn't crash into my turret until I got back to the lane. And as you can see, I shaved the wave decently enough. I should have killed one more melee minion. Um, and as you can see, as I'm coming back, I have a nice juicy wave in front of me. The problem with overstaying and trying to bounce the wave all the way back is if you stay on the map for so long with low HP after taking a fight, you can die to the enemy jungler, or if you don't push out the wave fast enough, the enemy top laner can come back and kill you. And if you don't fully crash the wave, they get to freeze, and you're screwed. So that's why, uh, that's a strategy there, when the wave's bouncing towards you, and you kill them to just base after you clear a certain amount of minions. So, we are back in the game now. Uh, we are doing a three wave crash, as you can see, he's gonna Q2 plus E here, watch out. No, he didn't do it. I'm gonna eat this. Oh shit. I'm fired. An ally has been slain. Get some life still going, huh? I hear the Yeah, Bilba, help me out here, brother. <laughs> okay, Velvet, take it away. So now I'm just AFK. No! I'm so sad. Get out of there. Ooh, clean. That was my bad. So, I made a really good play there by spacing the Graves and Aatrox and potentially trying to run them down and stalling for a Belveth, but I kind of trolled when I moved forward and allowed Graves to get on me and smite me for a slow and then kill me. So I probably should have just AFK'd and let Belveth do her thing, waited for her to finish them off, uh, or maybe come in and swoop in for an auto maybe, and then after push the wave with Belveth and then base, but my mistakes, it's all good. So let's come back and catch the wave, but again, not terrible. Even though we died, we still come back to a nice juicy wave underneath our turret. Maybe I can let the tower plating die here. Nice, we lost the plating. That's really good because Aatrox does not get it. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow down this wave right here. With these- oh, never mind, let's go, let's go over there. Let's ditch the wave immediately and see if I can help out. Nope, okay. 
So Aatrox overstayed after he killed me. So I'm going to push the wave here and take a plate. Because Aatrox is basing right now. And he's going to be back in top lane at around 11.20. So I'll get a nice, solid 12 seconds on this tower. And how you know when they're going to come back is you calculate their timer base, which is 7 seconds. You calculate their waiting time in the base, which is 3 seconds. Oh, there you go. 11.23. I was off by a couple seconds. I've been off my game. But, um... The way you know is you calculate 7 seconds to base, 3 three to 5 seconds for HP and gaining HP in the base, and then you calculate 26 seconds to walk back to lane. And then from there you'll have your number. So roughly I would just say 35 seconds is a good place for when someone will be back. Okay, the biggest thing for Aatrox's matchup is understanding uh, QE range. You have to look at Q1 potential. Will he Q1 here? If yes, then you'll have to tumble sideways or move sideways in a way to dodge the Q1. If he Q1s with no E, now it's very easy to play the game. Because if he decides to Q2, he's probably going to do it with E. Oh shit. Oh, it's getting serious. So yeah, if he ever Q1s and you, you call the bluff that he won't E with it, the Q2, he always call Q2 plus E. Yeah, I know he has flash. No! That caught me on the side, man. So sad. <clears throat> I guess I should have flashed towards the wall. That was my big mistake there. But yeah. But yeah, going back to Aatrox, uh, a more aside from that fight that we just had. If Aatrox Q1s with no E, he will very likely Q2 with E. Q2 with E is very easy to deal with. All you have to do is simply tumble backwards, or directly away from him, when he shoots his Q2. Because if he E's, you are very likely to be out of the range. The only way you actually get hit by Q2 plus E is if the Aatrox is really good and doesn't directly shoot the Q2 at you. He has to shoot the Q2 at an angle, where the tip of the Q2 uh, is slightly further out. So if you ever notice Aatrox Q2, look at the sides of his Q2. It's actually a bit longer range than the uh, flat Q2 facing towards you. So look at here. Look at look at the sides of the Q2. You can go back and pause. It's actually a little bit longer. So if he shoots the Q2 away from you at a diagonal angle, he can actually get a little bit extra range. So the only way you ever get hit by Q2 is if you are really positioned close to him. Yeah, right here, that's an example of what I'm talking about. If you Q ones with no E, you can you always Q the Q2. But there, because he directly shot the Q2 at me... He, oh, my alarm. Um, Alistair's popping too, by the way. But because he shoots the Q2 directly at me, it'll never hit me. Because I'm holding my initial spacing in a good place. The only way you get hit by Q2 at the tip is if you hold the position a little bit closer than you should have. Is if you hold a position that was a little bit closer to him, and you also Q late. But yeah, that's just a little thing that Aatrox players should know when dealing with the Bane matchup. Is you want to use your Q2 at an angle. Okay, we just flashed. That's fine. Okay, I'm in a position to fully pressure here. I got Ghost. I know Aatrox has no flash. Is someone TPing on me? I see. I love how the map is so big now. It's so nice for Vayne. Oh, why are you here, man? The dark should be. What if I, can I just run through this? No, I can't. <laughs> I probably should have just tried to go up, try, try juking up here, I guess. But unfortunate that Greg decided to TP and then stay in the lane after when I started walking up. Unlucky. But I guess I wouldn't expect any different. I guess if you see a vein walking up, 
You were to walk back up also. But doesn't that mean our mid is winning? Nope, that does not mean our mid is winning. It's a sad day, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, that's some tips and tricks about uh, Aatrox matchup. That's like the biggest fundamental thing. Um, it's just calling Q1 if he E's with it. If you think he's going to E with Q1, then you have to dodge it immediately. If he bluffs and he just Q1s, then you have to hold your Q. That's why when I played Vayne into the Aatrox matchup in Hyelo on stream a long time ago, a lot of people think I'm boosted because they would watch me stand there and just tank Q1 and they'll be like, what? Why don't you tumble? Like, uh, It's because I'm playing, like, in my mind, I'm playing a completely different game than what is expected, right? Like, I'm, I'm calling, okay, this guy is... Oh, fuck. <clears throat> but yeah, just a little thing to note when playing against Aatrox. Again, to reiterate everything I just said. If you think he's gonna Q1 with E, obviously dodge it, right? With, just tumble immediately, and then you play from there, then you can chase him whatever you want. If you think he's gonna Q1 with no E, then obviously hold your Q. And then from there, every single time you see a Q2 come out, you immediately Q backwards. <laughs> and then that's it, that's the matchup. If he, la if he lands a W on you, make sure you E for Q3. And then yeah, just don't get hit by Q3 uh, well, as you as you E him away. I personally tend to not care too much about Aatrox W because as long as you have your E, then you'll pers you'll be fine. But obviously, if you can escape it naturally um, with good movement, either by not get getting hit by it in the first place or being able to walk out of it, then you're absolutely vibing. Alright, what's the state of this game? They're gonna send Gregus into me, which is fine. Uh, this, that matchup's still good for me. As long as I don't get ganked. In the 1v1 department, Gregus normally can't kill you if you're pretty even with him. They're gonna send Aatrox bot, which is fine. Gregus should be top. And I'm, I, he won't be here for this tower defense. He's going down. I'm just gonna keep going. Opposite side objective. So, mid-game macro. Let's talk about that. So when it comes to mid mid game macro on vein top, I tend to just go opposite side map, which is basically you go to the opposite side of the main objective being played for. So what is everyone playing for right now? Dragon. I go to the opposite side, which is top lane, and then from there I like to try to pressure and look for look to like pull pressure away on the map. But in this case, I didn't have enough time to pressure all the way to tier two turret, which is where you ideally are as the objective is spawning. So right now. I'm gonna look to I'm gonna look to ping that moving bot lane here. Because I wanna be opposite side objective. What is the main side objective right now? It's gonna be Baron in 50 seconds. So I'm gonna ping that I'm going bot lane here. And try to pressure up to these turrets as the everyone's playing around Baron. So basically you force the enemy team into two scenarios. You force them into the scenario where they deal with you and you run away or you kill them. And then now your team has a potential to do Baron. Or, if they decide to do Baron with 5 people, then you continue pushing- Oh, oh my god. Okay. Or, they're in a position where if they do the Baron with 5 people, then you just continue pushing bot. And then from there, obviously your 4-man team isn't going to let us slide, so your 4-man team is going to go fight them. And then from there, you'll be able to get towers. If they send one person to deal with you, which is normally the top laner or mid laner, then you can either push them in to the tower and then rotate over to the Baron and you guys have numbers advantage, forcing the person who dealt with you to TP in. Uh, or if they don't have TP, that's even worse, then that means you have numbers advantage. Or you just kill them and take the tower, one or the other. <laughs> But yeah, that's basically the macro gameplay. That's like macro in like 10 seconds of how to play Vayne top. And to be honest, how to play like any split pushing top, to be honest. That's fucking the way to go. Alright, please don't come kill me. Uh, so sad. 
All right, we have Rage Blade. Uh, next up, we wanted Terminus because I wanted uh, armor and MR as I hit stuff. The armor penetration, I'm not really a fan of, but obviously it'll be there when you do decide to attack. Wits N is my vibe for sure, getting that MR, but I guess because they gave it tenacity for no damn reason. And I swear to God, guys, Riot Games made every change to every item I liked just to nerf Vayne. I don't care what anyone says or what the reasoning that they gave us was. Like, changing Bork to the first auto where you get the slow, changing Wits N to have tenacity. Like, what the hell is Vayne going to do with tenacity? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they specifically targeted the Bork Rageblade Wits End build that I always built on Vayne. But anyways, besides the point, we adapt. Uh, anyways, um, they're gonna do Baron. They have double side lanes pushing in right now. We, I have no choice but to group and see what I can do. Hopefully Yasuo doesn't show up, so then we're in a 4v4 situation. Nope. Yeah, so we just go Baron. If Yasuo is gonna keep pushing bot, we sack bot tower, double bot tower for Baron. Uh, and their Aatrox is dead, so we're perfectly fine. Looks like Samir will handle it with it. Oh, that's so sad. I fucked up. Finish him off? No Baron though. I guess I should have kept hitting the Baron. That was pretty troll of me to fight the Gragas. I thought I had the Gragas though because I landed the E into the wall, but I guess I had to face check the bush, which is a massive problem uh, because then it stalls enough time for him to get unstunned and then land the E on me, land whatever he needs on me. Alright, so unfortunately, we are not in a position to get to opposite side map, so I'm forced to group here uh, because by the time I start pushing top lane and I'm over here, people are going to be doing dragon already and my team will get mad. Should fear me. If that's the case, so I'm just forced to group here and team fight. So when you're team fighting, the biggest thing that you need to do is draw the zone of influence of each people that can kill you. The main people that can kill me is Gregus Alt and E, because they'll follow up Yasuo and Alistair. Everyone else doesn't matter. Oh, like two of them are dead already. Perfect. Yeah, just roll up here and then do dragon with the boys. Go dragon. Yep, go to Dragon, and then we're absolutely vibing. And then I can ignore Baron and just start pushing bot, which is the planned strategy of opposite side map. So Dragon gone. Don't care if we lose Baron, as long as we don't lose Soul, ideally. So, let's start pushing bot lane. I believe Yasuo can actually kill me 1v1 because he has exhaust. That is the only reasoning why. Evil lurks around every corner. But let's go push bot. Start pressuring. Ha ha ha! Uh feels good man. <laughs> So just a little piece of advice, I'm not saying to do it, but I'm just saying it exists. If you auto Yasuo through his wind wall, you'll gain lethal tempo stacks. If you auto any champion through the wind wall, you'll gain lethal tempo stacks. And you'll actually occasionally apply W stacks with Rage Blade, funnily enough. I'm so sad. No, no, no. We're more sad. Big piece of advice, guys, regardless of how you feel. Baron steals is never your jungler's fault. It's just the real. Unless it's like, obviously, they, they lose it to a Janna or something. But. If it's like a bursting champion, like uh, like Evelyn, Gragas, Ziggs, Lux, or just a, even the enemy jungler just jumps in, y you can't blame your jungler. It's just the reality. It's an unpopular opinion, I know, but... 
That's just the case. Because it, it just is what it is. But yeah, anyways. Let's go catch Midwave and just uh, wait until we get pushed on. But obviously, after I said that, I know a lot of you guys are still gonna blame your jungler and type X, like type WTF, XDDD, whatever it may be, because it's just the easy way out. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the easy thing to do when your when your teammates are trolling. <laughs> get that, get that, uh, get that anger out. You know. But anyways, all right. The next play for us is to group dragon. I guess I just group here. I don't know why I'd push this next wave. It might be an angle to slay these guys if they stay. Oh, well, there's an angle. You have Morgana Q. Let's go. Yo, what the? I smell black magics. This is so awkward. This is the gameplay that I'm talking about that I want to avoid at all costs, where I'm just running around like a headless chicken like that, and I have no direction going anywhere. There's no constant inflow of like CS going into your pockets, and you're just standing around waiting for something to happen, which is like one of the worst positions to be in. As vein top, you always want to be constantly pressuring. That's why I would have probably pushed top there, but I said I didn't want to because I thought there was something to do. Alright, my positioning is going to be very important. Stand very far back, watch out for the Alistair flash WQ. Wait for the initial, the initial gain, engage to happen, and pay attention to if Gragas still has ult. If Gragas still has ult, get ready to flash it so you don't get Yasuo ulted, or go invisible as you get hit by it, one or the other. So right now, I'm going to wait a long time for Alistair and Gragas abilities. None of the big ones have come out yet. Aatrox ult is out, which is fine, but that, I don't care about that. Okay, Aatrox Q flash, it's fine. I'm gonna try to reposition to land stuff here. Ooh! There's the Dragon Cell. So now I get to auto for lethal tempo stack here. I'm not chasing. Keep it clean. Dragon up. Make sure I don't die from a little random flank. And yeah, just play slow, hold my sums, chill, watch out for the Alistair engage, and watch out for the Gragasol, which did happen at some point. And I should be able to tower here to create pressure. Because even if I get flanked, which I don't think I will because they're all fail base. Okay, one one auto. Let's I think I'm a lot of face check this. Actually it doesn't matter if I face check or not, because I'm gonna have to push out this wave. I have to flash that, my mistake. Okay, we got the dragon at least though, and we probably won't lose the game. Yeah, we won't lose the game, so we're fine. Okay. Good job. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, so normally after Bork Rage Blade Wits End, uh, which is my old old school build, I'll start building full tank, which is like randuins or something. In this particular game, they have 180 tough, 180 jungle, 180 ADC. What is that item? Cube. So I think Randuins is actually valuable here. I'm gonna grab the Giant's Belt portion so that it can also help deal with Gregus too, because he seems like he's the one that's on my ass. If I grab the Warden's Mail, it would be very good for uh, Graves and Yasuo. But I think Giant's Belt will cover both sides. So we'll grab that instead. Let's go swing by red buff and then look to start pressuring bots. I have two options here. Do my classic opposite side map and try to pull two or three people. And I'll probably die because I have no summoners. Or group up with my teammates and try to team fight as a team with no sums. Both options are fine. I do have time to get into a position to pressure bot though. If I decide to keep pushing. Because there's still 40 seconds until the main objective. So for now, I'm going to push bot to get some CS into my pockets and try to get closer to level 18. And it looks like my teammates are all inting, so we're going to push bot. We're going to lose Baron. And then we'll probably end up team fighting at around mid turrets. 
um, at some point. So yeah, I'm gonna push one more wave and then base. Just to get the pressure out. Okay, take a bit. And then the Aatrox and Gregus seems to have based for me. So we can team fight this probably. Uh, they're not gonna give it. The question is, is how long can us three stall for Baron? Because Gregus is showing bot right now. But it looks the like I don't think they're doing it. Should feel which is good. Me. So all I can do here is just push mid, watch out the engage. I saw someone on the left hand side. Looks like no one is behind us, which is a god bless. Beware. Okay. Looks like they're on around the barren area. I have no time to start pushing bot and pressuring. So all I can do is push mid here and get close to the objective. Me and Gregus will match, which is fine. Let's get towards the Baron. We saw the Baron, right? Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Feels good, man, playing Vayne into Gragas. We E'd his E, we dodge his ultimate, and now we get to free push with our team. I'm not quite sure if we can end, but I know for sure Inhib's going down, that's for sure. Eh, Greaves. Greaves Alistair, we can probably end. We'll see. We'll see how, how, how we play it though. I'm gonna life still up a little bit here with my board. That one's calling to back. Okay, sure. It's fine. Safe, safe play. Safe gameplay. I guess these guys have seen too many throws in their past solo key games trying to push there. Okay, Randwin's uh, success. <coughs> Also, Witsan used to give movement speed, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it used to give movement speed. Uh, I have time before Dragon, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push top and force someone to respawn, and I'll have Baron minions too. I'm very confident no one on the enemy team can 1v1 me. They need two people to uh, have a chance at killing me, they need three people to guarantee kill me. Especially since I have double sums uh, coming up too. So I have plenty of time still, 30 seconds to push out. I got Bar Baron minions to speed up the process too. So I'll be for sure able to get to their uh, inhib tower actually by the time dragon spawns. I guess he picked these up for movement speed to run faster. I hear the innocent cry out. So yeah, 17 seconds. Oh, they sent Gragas for me, okay. You can't deal with the wave. Oh my god, damage. Okay, I need I need to rotate over. Oh, okay, looks like we won. Doesn't matter. Keep pushing them. So that was an RNG flip there on my part. I actually got caught, uh, stalled by Gregus. So it was an RNG battle of a 4v4. You got my ghost, I guess. I mean, your 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 Nexus towers are being pushed, and he's dealing with me. Come on, bro. Uh oh, uh oh, we might actually lose. Yeah, run away. They're running away. I'm gonna run away too. Okay. Oh my God. We have open minions. Evil looks around every Should be okay, it's just Gregus. Your turret has been destroyed. I actually think I can go for a cheese here on this Aatrox. This is a random cheesy play. An enemy has been slain. I have Randuins. Nah, I'm not helping Morgana. 
If I if I go for this Aatrox, they're all gonna collapse on me. Okay, I'm dead for sure to whatever's look. Okay. No, I'm so sad. No, dude. There's so many times I drop the ball randomly. If I just commit a little bit more in auto, knowing that they'll turn around, I'll be able to clean all that up. But and eh, it is what it is. Okay. So uh, the next Baron is next objective is 121. So yeah, as you guys can see. I hope you guys can see the consistencies across the macro, right? Each time you have a choice whenever there's a big objective or fight being played for. You have the uh, uh, option to go opposite side map and you pull one person and your objective should be to either kill them or hold them there uh, after you push the wave and then rotate over for a numbers advantage or force them to TP in, right? Which means you still have numbers advantage because if they TP in uh, as you enter the fight, there's still going to be three seconds away. Um, anyways, uh... What are the items that people are telling me to build? Uh, I don't want to ult tab. Uh, let's just go GA. Uh, uh, GA is so bad. Okay, let me explain why GA is bad. Or why I think it's bad. The reason why I think GA is bad, aside from if they, they really have like Zed and stuff that's really gunning for your ass, is because if you die and you pop ult, you're dead anyways after you come out of it. <laughs> so there's no point in building it. Unless you're good enough to call the fact that, okay, I'm going to die anyways, I'm not going to pop ult and save it until after I revive, then sure. But anyways, looks like there's a team fight here. Aatrox won't be here, so it looks like we can win. Pop the ult roll up. He's gone. That's a bear for sure. And then that should be double inhib into base into dragon. I think that's the play. Double inhib, base, dragon, and then we simply push bot and the game has five. But yeah, that's the consistencies across each game. You either split push, you you force one to come, you kill them, and then you keep pushing. Or you um you pull them there and then you go rotate over to the objective. Or you go group. Force group. But if you force group, there's a possibility you'll be running ar around. Do we want to end? Sure. I think we should go dragon. This is a safer call, but I, I'm here. I'm bad. Alright, nice. Good call, then. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a like, hit the sub button, and have a fantastic rest of your day. And don't worry, I'll be talking about that point in plenty future videos.